Hey, ka, hey, ka, hey, ka, hi everybody! I hope you're all having a good day. I hope you're all smiling and enjoying your lovely day. So in this following tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you guys on basically how to set up all luminous morph while also just learning basically how to set up all luminous and the controls about it. Just an all luminous tutorial for MMD basically. Um, and just remember this tutorial is not for Blender or VRM or anything like that. This is exclusively for PMX editor and any Anything MMD related. If you're looking for VRM stuff to do glowing, uh, you can look into Emission Mask or just Emission General Blender. It's a completely dis different story, but I'm not going over that in this tutorial. Um, but basically, we're going to be making Auto Luminous Morph, which is very, very easy to make. Uh, it's pretty much automatic. And what will these morphs do is that when we put our MMD model, um, you know, into the MMD program and we load Auto Luminous to create our glow, we can have a much more better control when it comes to the glowing intensity. And also with the morphs, we can even create automatic blinking animation, which is really nice. Um, so to start off, make sure that you have PMX Editor installed. If by any chance you're having problems installing PMX Editor or anything like that, please check out LearnMMD. LearnMMD pretty much has every single tutorial in existence for MMD and PMX Editor related. It's in the form of an article, um, but there are video forms as well on the website. So please check them out since it will help you out better understand MMD to the fullest. Um, pretty much any time basically but uh, make sure you have PMX editor and make sure that your model is converted to PMX if by any chance you have a let's say a Roid model and you want it to be a PMX file I do have a tutorial on how I personally do Roid models to PMX and then I also have another tutorial regarding blender models to PMX now do keep in mind that tutorial uh, doesn't cover everything but it's a good way to get started with the PMX journey but either way though, let's go ahead and just continue on with this. So, you know, once you, you should be able to know the navigation of PMX editor and such. Just want to make sure that's clarified um, because once again, this tutorial is assuming that you already know how to navigate PMX editor. So basically what we're going to do first and foremost. Um, now, for my case, I just want to at least show you how they look like. So they're going to look like this basically. Um, there are more morphs, but... Uh, to be honest, when it comes to auto luminous, there are some useless morphs that don't even work at all. I think it can work for you know certain cases, but usually I only use these four morphs right here. I also want to clarify that MMD actually has a limit of 255 morphs, I believe. Um, I could be wrong about it, but from what I've experimented in the past, the max for MMD is 255. Um, it'll you know, you can still have, like, a lot more uh, morphs, of course. But the thing is, is that once you reach more than 255, what will happen is that the morphs will basically disappear in the MMD program. So I just want to clarify that early. But either way, we want to get these morphs. So I'm going to go ahead and delete mine, basically. And we're going to create new ones. So we're going to go into Edit. And we're going to go to Plugins. Or Run Plugin DLL, which looks like this. Um, and once you click on that, um, you're going to basically load this file right here. So this is, um, the All Luminous Setter. Uh, in the description, you can download this. So basically, um, this is made by Soboro. Soboro, I believe that's their name. Um, they're basically the creator of Auto Luminous. So basically, um, they have the All Luminous Setter and then they have the actual Auto Luminous effect. So what we're looking for right now is only the almorphmaker.dll. All you pretty much have to do, you can, I mean, you can play around with the other stuff, but I only use this one because we're only going to be making morphs. So we're going to click and drag this over here, or you can just click on the button here and just load your files, which I'm not going to do that. But, um, but once you have that, you're going to click on the run button right here, and there's going to be a window that pops up. Now, pretty much, you can go ahead and pretty much hit OK and you're done. Me personally, though, because I do have a lot of blend shapes or what we call morphs. I call them blend shapes, but in the MMD community and in PMX editor, they're called morphs. I just want to clarify that. So, morphs. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm... Me personally, 
I actually get rid of these because for me personally these are the useless ones uh, these other two right here or these other three right here they I think I believe these actually do work um, but I don't really use them that often especially because I have a lot of morphs but if you let's say I only have 52 morphs on your model you can be able to just load all these and have fun with it but I only load these four but I'm gonna click OK and pretty much give my time for my model to process and boom I have the morphs right here now before we continue on going into MMD and loading up the auto luminous stuff there's also some other stuff I do need to explain first and foremost you need to go into the display this is very important I really really have to say this all the time in case you don't know what display is display is basically the bones uh, and the morphs that pop up what the the purpose of this is so that way if you are let's say animating from scratch and you want to register keyframes now if you by any chance don't know what a keyframe is or registering range you fancy words like that I do recommend please look up how to animate an MMD and you'll have a better idea of what I'm talking about but this is very important uh, even if you're not aiming from scratch and you're just slapping on motions basically this is still very important so that way let's say you save a project file and you load your motion you want to make sure that the motion would still remember the keyframe animations and stuff and just make sure everything is just registered properly it's just you know convenience sake and just better so just make sure that you have your stuff you know register here by default it should be able to register but if by any chance it doesn't just double check if they're here if they're not then just go to the morph right here click on the ones that are here on the drop list and then click on add and you're good you can also double check for bones as well just want to put that out there as well in case anything um, but make sure you have all your stuff registered it could just be in one slot or multiple like mine it really just depends on up to you but yeah um, probably in the future I might talk more about display frames in depth but that's pretty much all you really need to know on a basic level of what their purpose is but either way um, so pretty much once we have our morphs ready okay so before we uh, take our model into MMD and have it you know set up with auto luminous there is one last thing I do want to mention so it's regarding the reflection saying right here now um, basically for other programs, this can mean other things. Um, however, to keep things simple, and because I really don't want to overcomplicate this, but to just keep it in a simple, simple, basic level, reflection is basically just how much light will reflect off of something. But for all luminous, we're going to just say that, it, at least for MMD terms, the reflection is basically what's going to help us be able to achieve either a bigger glow or a small glow now for stuff now this model's outdated so please don't mind my settings but uh, for reflection personally with me I would recommend that for stuff like the skin or the outfit um, like you know cloth I would recommend have the reflection set to zero that way there's no glowing on your skin and such however for stuff like for me I would say maybe I don't know like the little cotton ball I have on my neck here or maybe a bit of my headphones even or maybe even my shoelaces um, on this old model um, I would probably have it where the reflection could be like 50 or a hundred basically if you want basically in a nutshell this is just gonna impact how much something glows so if you want something to not glow as much, put it to zero. If you want something to kind of semi-glow, you can put it to 20 or 50. If you want something to glow really, really, you know, a really big glow, like eye highlights, which a lot of people tend to always do that, um, you can set it to 110. That's usually a recommended value for the eye highlights in, pretty much. Uh, that's kind of it regarding, um, you know, just in a nutshell, the all lumen stuff and, you know, just at a simple level, basically. And pretty much all you have to do is do control S for saving or just go to file and then save or save as and such. But either way, uh, once you pretty much have your morphs and your reflection settings set up and stuff and making sure that on display your morphs are registered, 
pretty much we can go ahead into the MMD program and we can begin loading our model. So I'm going to go ahead and load my model. So um, let me just, um, first and foremost, I'm going to go ahead and load the X file. So X file, in case you're curious of what that is, this is the direct X files. Typically they can be used for accessories, but a lot of times, um, now, a lot of times, you know, with coders, uh, they tend to use the X-Files as a way to be able to have more control with a certain effect, basically. Um, I'm not going to go too in-depth on X-Files, but just in a nutshell, they're pretty good when it comes to uh, manipulating effects a lot more easier. Um, or, you know, just simple accessories like, I don't know, a mustache or a leak or something. I don't know, just... Um, I don't know what kind of accessories, you know, you like to play with, just, that's what, uh, in a nutshell, the X-Files are for, in case you're gonna ask. We're gonna go ahead and load my model, and you're going to see that the model has loaded, and it's really bright, uh, shield your eyes, please. But, here's the thing, so, just wanted to make sure this is said, so, um, I will mention too, so... I will mention as well, um, keep this in mind, for me personally, I always like to keep the auto luminous stuff, uh, or at least the morph set to other. So if you're trying to figure out where these morphs are, um, you're gonna have to go down to the bottom right corner, um, uh, of the facial manipulation, basically. And you're going to scroll all the way down, uh, and try to, like, find the, um, morph, basically, which I'm gonna go ahead and try to hunt mine down. It should be somewhere here. Ah, here it is. Um, so basically, um, I can see my morphs here. For me, it's crowded with all these other morphs. But for you, you might find it a lot more easier. Um, if by any chance uh, you're seeing something like the null or maybe you're not seeing the words properly, um, I will mention, please make sure that you do set an English name, by the way. I just want to make sure that is clear because if you don't set up an English name uh, you might get like the null or some weird name basically which I've set I usually always set my models to have names basically but either way um, pretty much uh, what you're going to do is you're going to um, use the morphs to kind of control how you want the emission so for me, I want the wings to not glow as much. I want them to still glow, but not as much, basically. And, you know, this could be an appropriate amount. Of course, Old Mall, I would probably do a lot more edits to make it look better, but, you know, it doesn't matter. But I will start off by saying the, the emission to be a lot lower. Uh, that's what I usually do. And if your mall is in case too bright, you might want to do that. If by any chance the emission is too low, you might want to use the light up to make it glow more, if you wish. And then for blink, what this will do is that it will allow an actual animation to sort of play uh, with the uh, auto luminous. Basically, what it's doing technically is that it's just um, you know in the shaders, it's basically just turning on and off via effect basically that's basically what's happening um but this is a lot more you know nicer instead of doing some crazy stuff this is just more nicer basically so instead of just manually animating the all luminous it's done for you you can have it to be a uh, very slow of a blink or um you know if you set it to one but if you set it super close to zero it's going to blink a lot um, I definitely recommend light blink if you want, you know, some simple stuff. If you're doing something like a car or something, like a car blinking, uh, there is the light and then the blink stutter, I believe. I think that's what this stands for, blink stutter. Um, but basically it's going to do this effect. It's really nice if you're trying to achieve like a sort of car effect, I guess. Um, unless, you know, you want to use it for something else, but remember, set it to one the slower the blinking will be, but if you set it to like closer to zero, it will be faster, and then zero would mean that it's inactive, basically. And of course, like I said, there is the other morphs, but I don't personally use them as much. You could play with them if you want, but for the most part, they don't really have any effect a lot. 
But either way, though, besides that, um, the last thing I want to mention is that on the accessory manipulation, let's say, for example, you don't want to use the morphs, which I guess that's, you know, up to you. If you want to, like, decrease the emission, like, how bright it is, you can play around with the accessory manipulation size and threshold. So, for example, if I set the threshold to zero and I press enter, uh, you can see that the glowing has gotten a lot more less, um, but of course if I set the threshold to 1, it's going to, you know, basically be more glowier. Um, and then of course you can set the size to either 2 so you can have more of a glow, or you can set it to 0 for pretty much no glow. That's if you want to have, I guess, more control. Really just up to you on what you personally want. I personally just mess with the morphs pretty much uh, since they do everything. But that's just up to you if you want that extra option basically. If uh, preference. But overall, um, that's pretty much in a nutshell auto luminous. There's also the mention that in Mikumiku Miku effect as well which is required to use auto luminous. There is something called the owl emitter. Basically what this will do is that... Um, typically, at least from what I see from other MMDers, they would tend to use this um, when it comes to trying to basically, let's say you want like a sort of rhinestone effect, like a glitter rhinestone effect on your model. That's basically what the all emitter would do. It's really nice. Um, I don't use it as much, but I definitely do recommend if you want that sort of effect on your model. Um, you can go on DeviantArt and find people who are sharing like texture images or stuff, um, or anything, you know, any, uh, sort of like, you know, resource pack when it comes to alt emitter, uh, shader packs and stuff, so that way you can load it into, um, Miku Miku Effect, but either way though, um, I hope that pretty much covers everything about All Luminous. Uh, let me know if you have any other questions regarding this or if you have a suggestion regarding MMD stuff. I am trying to get back on making MMD tutorials, so I would really appreciate if you do give me recommendations on what else you want to learn about MMD, and that way I can be able to try my best to make the tutorial happen. But with that being said, though, hey, 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 everyone. I hope to see you guys next time, okay? Bye bye!